This is 3 News Daily. Hello, Northeast Ohio, and welcome back to 3 News Daily on this Monday, January 9th. I'm Stephanie Haney here with your top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. And we start today in Canton, where police say a burglary suspect is dead after an altercation with a homeowner. Last night around 8 p.m., Canton police responded to two separate reports of a burglary in process. When officers arrived at the home on Clarendon Avenue, they found a man laying on the kitchen floor with stab wounds. Police say the suspect was stabbed by the homeowner after the suspect entered the house through the back door. He was taken to an area hospital and later died. This is a developing story. And today, 22-year-old Karis Rebel was laid to rest this morning following her funeral at the Trinity Baptist Church in Marion. The newlywed was stabbed to death last week while working at a Dollar Tree store in Upper Sandusky. The suspect in her death, Bethel Beckel, has been charged with murder. His next court date is Wednesday. Police believe that this was a random attack. And a new report from Orkin says that Northeast Ohio is one of the worst places for cases of bed bugs. This is not a list you want to be on. The Cleveland Akron area landed at number four in the list of the top 50 worst cities with infestations. At the top of the list is Chicago. That's followed by New York City and Philadelphia. Those are some busy places for us to be in that company. Three other Ohio cities also made the top 50 list. Columbus, Dayton, and Cincinnati. Officials say the nationwide rankings are based on data from the metro areas where Orkin performed the most bed bug treatments from December 1st, 2021 through November 30th, 2022. At least we're getting it taken care of, though. All right, now in Akron, following a tentative agreement reached late last night between the teachers union and the school board, there will be no teacher strike. The Akron School Board president says the deal still needs to be ratified by the union and voted on by the Board of Education. Details are not yet available, but we do know the new deal is for three years. Our Lydia Aspara has more. This is the last time the Akron Teachers Union went on strike. We just didn't reach an agreement. The issues are still there. They're still far apart, and we didn't get any closer. That was back in 1989. Pay and discipline were the issues then, and they were the same this year. Back then, they went on strike. But on Sunday night, hours before the union was going to make that call, a tentative agreement was met. I was attacked two different times. Good You're news fine. for Lynn Wankata. She's been teaching for 30 years. Okay. She teaches multi-handicap classes. One of her students got aggressive. He got mad and used this part of his hand, the strongest part of your hand, and hit me down the forehead, down the face which is considered a deadly blow. Now, is that one of the reasons you retired? It is the reason I retired. After she retired, she came back to the district as a sub. I was assaulted again as a substitute teacher. Taking a sucker punch to the face. For Wankata and many other teachers, security has been a big issue. The Akron School Board has been addressing those issues, adding more cameras and metal detectors. Now that there has been a resolution, it will be better for students and teachers, says Wankata. Learning, she says, has been on hold since the beginning of the school year. Wow, that is some scary stuff. Thank you for that report, Lydia. Now, in Lorain County, a battle is brewing over life-saving equipment. Two members of the Lorain County Board of Commissioners voted to rescind two separate resolutions passed last month during a board meeting this morning. Those resolutions would set aside over $4 million for upgrades to the current county public safety radio system. Commissioners Jeff Riddell and David Moore want to go with a different system, but fire departments in the area say the new system that they want to use is not as reliable. Our Carmen Blackwell will have more on this story this evening. Now here's some shocking news that none of us saw coming. The Cleveland Browns have cut ties with Bernie Kosar, who has worked on the team's radio shows. Now there's speculation that it's over a $19,000 bet he placed on the Browns to beat the Steelers. This was one of those promotions with sports betting now legal in Ohio. And there is an NFL rule that says all personnel and players are banned from betting on football games. Bernie tweeted yesterday, I was informed by the Browns that my services are no longer desired or needed. Then went on to say, I am shocked and disappointed. Brown and orange is my life. And a lot of people bummed out about that. He is a Cleveland Browns legend. And the team is wrapping up their season with a lot of unanswered questions, not just about Bernie's job. They lost 28 to 14 in the finale against the Steelers and they ended the season with a seven and 10 record. Now the Browns certainly thought 
Defense was where the change needed to be made because just this morning, 3 News confirmed that the Browns have fired defensive coordinator Joe Woods. The announcement first came from a tweet by the NFL Network's Tom Pelissero. Then head coach Kevin Stefanski said in a statement that management didn't perform to their standards enough this season and that everyone shares that responsibility. Stay with us as we gather more information on what the future looks like for the Browns. And that is what our question of the day is all about because there were certainly high expectations for the Browns this season. So we want to know, where do you think it all went wrong? You can post your comment to the WKYC Facebook page and we'll talk about it during What's New at 4 o'clock. Let us know what you think. A lot of possibilities there. Now, in more football news, doctors at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center will speak today at 3 p.m. with another update on Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin. Just yesterday, DeMar posted a photo of himself from his hospital bed. That was on Sunday, and you can see him sitting up in bed, cheering on his teammates. This is less than a week after his cardiac arrest happened on the field during Monday Night Football. Now, in his tweet, DeMar wrote, Game time. And it was quite the game for Buffalo, too. They beat the Patriots 35-23. to that was, a good, that was a good game to watch. Now, back here in Ohio, Governor Mike DeWine set to work on a list of executive orders shortly after taking a second oath of office yesterday. The first being a ban on foreign-owned websites and apps, like TikTok, having them on state-owned or leased electronic devices because of security concerns. And a new voting law is now in effect, changing voting rights for Ohioans. Now voters will have to show a photo ID to vote. That means that utility bills, government documents, or other forms of ID that used to be acceptable will no longer be accepted. DeWine says that this law works to protect election integrity, but he also said he might veto any further legislative attempts to restrict voting access here in Ohio. And before we go, we have an update from Cedar Point on the Top Thrill Dragster. It's been shut down since a 44-year-old Michigan woman was badly hurt when a metal bracket fell off the roller coaster and hit her in the back of the head. Cedar Point was found not responsible for that injury, and today, park representatives posted a video hinting that the ride will be reimagined when it reopens. Nothing else was shared, but we do now have confirmation that the updated version of the ride is coming in 2024. That's it for today's edition of 3 News Daily. Thank you very much for being with us. Remember, you can always catch the live version on TV as well. That's every day on 1 p.m. as part of NBC News Daily. Whether you're watching this on WKYC+, YouTube, our Instagram page, or listening on your favorite podcast platform, we appreciate you. We'll be back tomorrow with more of your top stories.